I get angry when, like, uh, when a system is broken or stupid or doesn't make sense. That's what pisses me off. And I don't direct it at anyone. You know, like if you're, when you're on a plane and the plane would land and then 10 minutes before they open the doors, everyone else on the plane stands up and just stands there putting their bags on and banging each other in the face like this. And you're just sat there in your seat quite justifiably thinking, pack of twats! Just <laughs> perfectly reasonable. <laughs> Commonal garden anger, you know, or if you're in the if you're in the bank There's three desks two of them are open a customer at each three people in the queue in front of you You're thinking right this will take no time at all. This will be fine And you find yourself sort of hanging around going well come on there's no movement up ahead a few more people join the queue You're starting to rumble going, oh, God, Come on, this doesn't this can't be how you're supposed to do No, no, it's fine. It's fine. And then a third cashier turns up you're thinking thank goodness They whisper something to the second one turns out what they've whispered is it's getting busy, isn't it? Do you fancy a vape? <laughs> and then they leave one desk 30 people now in the queue and what saves me is that I'm so volatile I just I just flip I'm so emotional that all it takes I'm, I'm got all this energy oh, for God's sake and it, all it takes is one person in the queue in front of me to actually have an audible meltdown. And I do an emotional 180. I'm there going, for God's sake. All it takes, one person to go, oh, for God's sake. Suddenly, I'm, I flip. I'm like, hey, baby, relax. It's just the... <laughs> it's, just the it's just the bank, man. It's just... It's just money. I mean, what is... What, what, is, what is money? What are the guys behind the desks, man? They're, they're us. They're us, aren't they? They're the same guys. They were the people. We're all the people. We're all made. We're all made out of stars. What even is time? It's just a shared illusion. I don't normally do this under coloured fairy lights. It's quite. <laughs> Sure, but sure, baby, I'll leave the premises. Yeah, cool, cool. <laughs> they say, they say when you become a parent, you recognize that you are no longer the picture, but the frame. That's a weird concept. You're not the picture anymore, you're the frame. Do you get what I mean by that? It's like you're, you're no longer the star of the movie of your life. You're not even the camera crew. You're just catering. That's it. <laughs> and I've got, I've got these two friends. I'm not showing off, at least two. And uh, I've known them 20 years. They're a married couple. They're both about five years older than me. And as long as I've known them, I've been secretly sort of not quite copying their life, but I, I've been noticing the challenges they go through five years ahead of when I might and trying to glean information from them. You know, they're, they're like the canary in the coal mine, the dog in the space shuttle. They're the, the mouse on the unapproved antidepressants, right? I'm following them. <laughs> what happens? You do that? You don't? Okay, fine, fine. I realised very recently... My friend Tom, he's five years younger than me, and he's been doing the same thing to me and my life the whole time, right? They're ahead of me on the timeline. He's behind. He's copying me. There are people five years younger than him copying him. They're doing it to people five years older than them. And all of us are just clinging grimly to this rope, <laughs> like Shackleton through the Antarctic, howling advice to one another across the frozen tundra. <laughs> Next! <laughs> you're not gonna like it! <laughs> and you're not gonna like it, are you? Because the people right at the end of the rope, they're just looking out over a crevasse. <laughs> There's very little point in persevering! <laughs> What's that? Some, something about persevering! <laughs> Right out, we'll keep on persevering. <laughs> and it's pointless trying to give each other advice because today's advice is meaningless tomorrow because the terrain shifts so fast. You're there in the middle thinking, what, what are you going to do for money when you get too old to work? <laughs> That's easy. That's when the pension kicks in, right? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> did, 
Did you guys get a pension? <laughs> we don't need one. We've got Bitcoin. Okay. <laughs> Let me know how that works out. It's insane. It's, in it's it, like the advice we got given the first time we were pregnant. Yeah, we. <laughs> get over yourselves. People hate that. We, we were pregnant. Yeah, we got pregnant again because as it happens, apparently we couldn't keep it in my pants. The, <laughs> The advice we got given the first time was very simple. It was always the same. Go and enjoy yourself. Go to the cinema. Go for meals out. Have fun while you can. The advice we're shouting down the line to Tom, five years younger than me, think about starting a family. The advice now is very different. The advice now is just, get money. That's the advice. <laughs> get money. And if you can, high ground. <laughs> Because there's no, I, the one thing I was really unprepared for was the fact that I was going to become a, a breadwinner. For some reason, I hadn't given that any thought. I'm a, a breadwinner. <laughs> I have to win bread. <laughs> Very few places offer bread as a prize. <laughs> Apparently, I've got to win it. The younger people in the room might be thinking, well, just buy the bread. You can't buy the bread, you idiots. You buy the bread, you take it back to the nest, they're like, they know. <laughs> you didn't buy this, right? Did you buy it? You buy it, it tastes bored. No, 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 I won it, won it fair and square. <laughs> was it a casino, was it? No, no, funny story, bumped into a duck on the way home. <laughs> Correctly guessed his secret name. <laughs> Any other breadwinners in? Any breadwinners? No, no one. Just a bunch of you, a bunch of bread losers. Great. <laughs> but everything's now, people talk about the gig economy. It's so weird. My job is I'm so free, right? Comedy, stand up comedy is the ultimate zero hours contract, right? If I want, I'm so free, I'm free as a bird. If I want to stop working ever, I can just die. <laughs> oh, it's extraordinary. I don't want to paint my wife as some sort of grasping, bread-hungry churl. No, far from it, we get on. She's, she's great. We have very different leadership styles, me and my wife. We're both, we're both natural leaders. I think that's quite unusual for a couple. We're both, like, we're two leaders. Most couples, a lot of couples, I think, is one leader, one follower. Uh, and if you're, if you're in a couple now and you're thinking, I wonder which one I am, I've got some bad news. <laughs> <laughs> some couples, presumably, two followers, but we don't hear much from them because they don't get out. <laughs> But a few couples, I think, a small percentage of couples, two leaders. Now, I don't like to ask at shows are there any couples in where it's two leaders, because one time in a gig, at the back of the room, a little voice went, yep, and then there was a pause, and another voice went, no, you're not. And it was... <laughs> uh, you don't want to do harm, you know. So, um... But I think, me and my wife, it's true. We're, we're two leaders. We've got different leadership styles. So I'm more like a, I'm like a loose... Maverick MacGyver, you know, I'm like a sort of a kind of rolling adaptable kind of a leader whereas my wife actually gets things done. So it's <laughs> We have to we have to separate we have to uh, divvy up the labor You know, I'm in charge of uh, mowing the lawn packing the car lifting things and my wife is the architect of all of our futures <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I'm good at packing I pull my weight. It's my dream. I'm so good at packing. It's my dream one day to be going through a supermarket checkout and when the lady says, do you need any help packing? By the end of the sentence, she realises she's in a bag for life. <laughs> <laughs> I just moonwalk. I climb up on the conveyor belt and pretend to moonwalk out just slowly like that. <laughs> that would be the plan. The, the reason I'm giving you this uh, uh, intel, insight into, uh, into my marital dynamic is to explain why, at the age of 44, my wife is currently trying to organise a grown-up play date for me to go on with another man in order that I make a friend. <laughs> I want to be absolutely clear about this. I'm not lonely, but I moved to Bristol, I moved to a foreign city at the same time as I became a dad. So I don't get the chance to meet other dads, right? They all socialise during the evening and work during the day. I have to socialise during the day because I work in the evening because of you. And... <laughs> And so I don't get to see them. It's just not fair. My wife can walk up to any other mum and go, hey, we should get a coffee. Should we be friends? Suddenly they're friends. Doesn't work like that for men, does it? Not the system at all. No, the system for male friendships is you've got the kids you knew at school minus one who died, and that's it. <laughs> and that's how it's always been. That's how it's supposed to be. 
so we met this guy. We met this one guy. Ollie was his name. We met him at uh, God. We met him at a at a toddler rave. That's a thing. Three hours of banging techno on a Sunday afternoon. A load of haggard parents at the side of a church hall. Hundred kids with their tops off, ripped to the tits on fruity pouches. Yes. I remember. I remember this one specifically because it was, uh, there's always a costume theme, and this particular one was superheroes, right? Uh, and there was one particularly attractive younger mum who had come dressed as Catwoman, uh, and all of the other mums were like, oh, fuck off. It was just great. <laughs> we met Ollie, our kid was playing with his kid, and, uh, and then eventually we chatted for five minutes, and then uh, his kid ran off, Ollie followed him, and that was that. And then ever since then, my wife has been stalking him on Instagram <laughs> in order to pimp him to me as a potential friend. Right? So I'm, I'll be washing up, and she'll sidle up to him and be like, uh, have you seen uh, Ollie's into martial arts and board games? And you like board games and uh, talking about martial arts. <laughs> And suddenly it's put me in the position, I'm like a kid on my first day at nursery going, I don't want to go like that. Because I don't know how to package myself as a potential friend for a grown man. I just don't know how to do it. I've written and then deleted an introductory text to him. God knows how many times. <laughs> Hel hello, mate. <laughs> hey, friendo. <laughs> Ew, who am I? Who am I? I don't even talk with the friends in my life that I love. My, my, my mate, oh, my best mate, Noel, right? We've known each other since we were 11. We've traveled the world together. I love the bones of him, right? And I will see him for a, for a cheeky pint once in a blue moon. It's a running joke in our household. I'll come home and my wife will go, how's Noel? And I literally won't understand the question. <laughs> how, how, how is he? How is he? How is Noel? He is simply no. <laughs> Immutable, unchanging. He reminds me of me, I remind him of him. That's why, we, that's why we hang out with each other. I can tell you what he thought of the movie The Suicide Squad. Is that what you mean? Is that how he is? And then she'll say something weird like, but hasn't his mum been ill? I don't know. <laughs> how do you know that? Stop asking my friends questions, you weirdo. <laughs> Because we don't speak with each other, we just talk at each other. We sit and conversationally groom one another like a pair of orangutans on a log in Borneo, <laughs> picking fleas out of each other's fleece. Mm, did you like the film? <laughs> yeah, yes, I did like it. You were like me. Yes, I am. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> did you enjoy Black Mirror the other day? Yes, I, I didn't like it to begin with, but then I did like it by the end. Yes, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> And tell me, are you, are you playing that, uh, the Red Dead Redemption game on the PlayStation? No, I've had, I've had to stop playing that. It's a little bit too immersive, yes, I've been saying that. Talked about this at a show in Bristol. A stranger tweeted me the following day. Stu, hey, really enjoyed the stuff about the grown-up play days. Just so you know, my friend Clive lives in Bristol and uh, he's free during... <laughs> That's not what this is! <laughs> this is not some sort of pathetic, platonic pickup line. I'm not, I'm not coming out here going, uh, hello, men. <laughs> I am very lonely and I wish to play Settlers of Catan. <laughs> It's not not that. <laughs>